The San Francisco Chronicle wrote one of the craziest Bernie Sanders smears I've ever seen. It's like they gave up trying to be convincing. So here's the tweet about it. This is actually a line from the article as well. Senator Sanders is no white supremacist insurrectionist. But, God, I love that. But, <laughs> he manifests privilege, white privilege, male privilege, and class privilege in ways that my students could see and feel. So let me play the same game that they're playing. This is an incredibly anti-Semitic article. This article is so anti-Semitic that I think your hero might be Goebbels. Why are you viciously smearing the Jew? It must be because of your latent hatred of Jewish people. Ah, now that's unfair, right? That's unfair, correct? Of course it's unfair. So, why on earth would you play these same games in another direction? Because they can't help themselves, they hate Bernie Sanders. So, um... The writer in this article, I recommend everybody reads it, even though you're going to want to rip your eyeballs out of your face as you're doing it. Um, the writer compares Bernie at the inauguration to the insurrectionists on January 6th, who were attempting, albeit in a pathetic way, to overthrow the government. There's a comparison there. Now, of course, it's the classic tongue-in-cheek, like, I'm not going to make this comparison, as you then go on to make the comparison. Um, but it's there. It's it's clear that it's there. So, for those of you who are wondering what the argument is, because clearly it's the biggest stretch of a point you've ever heard in your life, what they say is, okay, Bernie Sanders was getting all of the attention on social media during the inauguration. Which is true, he was getting a lot of the attention on social media. And I can't believe that was happening, because here you had all these these women who were in historic circumstances. Kamala Harris, first woman of color, is vice president. You know, um, Michelle Obama was there. Hillary Clinton was there. She says that in her class, they talked about the significance of the color that the women were wearing and the significance of all the various outfits, including the performers like Jennifer Lopez and this and that. So, the argument is, here you have all of these strong women, and many of them women of color, with deeply significant and symbolic colors and outfits, and um, taking the moment in seriously, and treating it with the weight that it deserves. And there you have Bernie Sanders, who shows up all schlubby, with his jacket that he's probably had since 1996. You know, his mittens that were made by a teacher. And somehow, Bernie Sanders gets all the attention, instead of us focusing on what these amazing women of color were wearing. That has to be... Sexism, that has to be male privilege, white privilege, as to why Bernie Sanders was getting all the attention. Now, I mean, obviously that's a silly, silly, silly point to make. And, and the reason it is, is because it's almost like you're going out of your way to weave a narrative to match the ideology you already have. The ideology you already have is, you know, men bad, women great, white people bad. Um, people of color, great. So now let me just, like, fit everything into the into those boxes by any means necessary. And so what you're doing is overlooking the actual reason why Bernie Sanders was prominently trending all throughout um, the inauguration day. And the answer to that is very simple, because Corn and I actually spoke about this on Kyle and Corn a few weeks back. Bernie Sanders came across like a regular person like some soccer dad or some soccer grandpa who is is relatable. It's relatable that it was freaking freezing out there and he's got on the really heavy, thick jacket to stay warm and he was trying desperately to stay warm. The other thing is the mittens made by a teacher, which he's had forever. By the way, he ended up raising a tremendous amount of money for charity as a result of the fact that he went viral, if I remember correctly. Um, so the reason why people were relating to him is because it was relatable. He felt like a, a, a fish out of water. He doesn't like, you know, the, the fancy schmancy situation. He clearly would rather be sitting in from, front of a fire with hot cocoa, watching, you know, reruns of the Brady Bunch or whatever. 
And that's relatable. People look at that and they're like, every time I go to one of these events, whatever it may be, a wedding, something, I just feel like, I, I feel like a fish out of water. I feel like, why am I there? So people saw that and they related to it. That's the, the everyday person. And it wasn't just men and white men relating to it. It was, everybody was relating to it. So that's why it blew up. And when it get, comes to all the others who were dressed in a way that was like wearing their Sunday best and really going over the top with it. I think the thing that people find gross about that is to a lot of people in D.C. and in these elitist circles, that's what politics is to them. Politics is essentially, as um, the old saying goes, it's, it's Hollywood for ugly people. Politics is Hollywood for ugly people. So to them, it's like, what they care about is the narcissism and the self-aggrandizement and the fawning adoration of the media and, like, the verification that you're in that upper echelon of society. And so, that's what politics is to them. To Bernie Sanders, politics is, I want to raise wages, and I want to give people health care, and I want to end the wars, and I want to free all the nonviolent drug offenders. That's politics to Bernie Sanders. So again, it's relatable for that reason. Nobody can relate to the super beautiful or, you know, super dressed up person who's loving every minute of this top 1% gala. Nobody can relate to that person. We all relate to the guy who's wearing the big thick jacket and just trying to stay warm and looks like he has no friends there. So anyway, that's, that's the reality of it. And instead, what do they do? They flip it on its head. So now... The people who care about the narcissism and the self-aggrandizement are virtuous. And the person who's the regular person, oh, the fact that he got all the attention just proves white privilege and male privilege. I mean, it's ridiculous. Square peg, round hole stuff all day. It's this person taking their ideology and superimposing it onto uh, what was happening that day. And, and it really is elitist snobbery. You know what I mean? That's what it is. It's elitist snobbery. It's the exact kind of politics where that turns people off to the left. This person considers himself on the left, which I'm sure they do. It turns people off because it's just these little sectarian identity cults. And like, it's, it, it's very divisive. So anyway, it takes a lot to be the biggest smear article I've ever seen against Bernie. And I think this made the cut. There's been endless smears against Bernie. Endless. But this is like, this is definitely top 1% of smears.